Christine, it's a busy meeting here in Washington, D.C. for the AACR. You've put your finger on an extraordinarily important aspect of this in that breast cancer incidence is different in different communities. You've looked particularly at African-American women. You're interested in lifestyle factors. Can you tell me what it is you've been doing in, in these studies you're so much involved with? So we know that white women are more likely to get breast cancer. The prevalence is much higher in white women than African American women. But African American women are more likely to get breast cancer before they're 40 and also to have a more aggressive kind of breast cancer. It doesn't um, express the estrogen receptor. Um, and Or there's triple negative estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, HER2, negative for all of those. So when tumors express these receptors, they're druggable, okay? ER positive tumors, they can treat with antiestrogens. HER2 um, positive tumors, they can treat with Herceptin. But these triple negative tumors, um, there's no druggable targets. And so they have a very poor prognosis. Right, tell me what you have been doing then in the Women's Circle of Health study. So the Women's Circle of Health study is a case control study with um, my colleague Elisa Bandera, who's at the Cancer Institute of New Jersey. And we've been enrolling African American women with breast cancer, European American women with breast cancer, and an equal number of controls. So right now we've got about 1,000 in each group. Um, we've been looking at um, their tumor tissue and whether or not it expresses estrogen progesterone receptors and, and HER2. And then looking at what are the risk factors for more aggressive cancers um, in African American women and in white women. Um, now, I know you're interested in g genetic factors, yes. but lifestyle comes into it, and there's this nature versus nurture argument, yeah. even in breast cancer. Yeah. What's the trade off? So, I've done a lot of research in um, the role of genetic susceptibility to cancer. What I've been most interested in is how genetic susceptibility may modify the effects of exposures. So why do some people who smoke get lung cancer and others don't? You know, maybe there's differences in, in their genetics. Uh, but we've been doing quite a bit of genetic research, but I'm more interested in the epidemiology because we want to prevent cancer. We want to prevent more aggressive cancers. And so if we can identify what the risk factors are for those tumors that are going to be most lethal, we could try to uh, in, in intervene um, and, do and to reduce the risk, yes. It's very frustrating that African-American women are doing the right thing as far as cancer risks are concerned by having lots of babies, maybe, and yet it serves them very poorly. That's what you've discovered, isn't it? Well, having children, we have always thought, reduces risk of breast cancer. The younger you have them, the better. The more you have, the better. But most of those studies were conducted in European American women, um, generally older women. And so once we could really classify these breast tumors and can see that they're not all the same, it became very clear that having children only reduced risk of ER positive, this good prognosis breast cancer, that older women, white women get. And actually, having children increases risk of triple negative breast cancer um, twofold. But the, the, the most important point is that breastfeeding totally removes that risk. Findings on the influence of breast cancer, uh, findings on the uh, influence of breastfeeding right. on breast cancer have been confusing at times in the past. How is it it's now Yes, clear? yes, and I think that's because we were considering breast cancer as one disease. And the majority of studies were being conducted in white women. And now that we can really tease out that there are different types of breast cancer, um, some that are more common in African Americans, some more common in white women, um, we can see because the, the most of the studies now have shown that it's having children that reduces risk of ER positive or luminal A breast cancer. Breastfeeding doesn't add anything to that. Um, whether or not you breastfeed, as long as you have children, risk is reduced. It's only for this more aggressive breast cancer. So when you've got, and you're looking at one disease, treating it as one disease, and you've got opposite effects, when you put them together, you may see nothing or studies may be inconsistent depending upon the populations. What are the implications for, on the one hand, 
uh, agencies that are setting out to prevent breast cancer or prevent cancer, and on the other hand, for cancer doctors who need to deal with it. What are the implications from these facts that you're discovering? Well, we don't know yet how parity or breastfeeding may affect breast cancer survival. So right now, this is just risk. Uh, we know that breastfeeding is fantastic for babies. It's the best thing you can do for your baby. And if it also can prevent this very lethal lethal form of breast cancer. That's even more reason to um, really try to reinforce it. And you've got a consortium going? Yes, yes. With um, the Carolina Breast Cancer Study, uh, the Black Women's Health Study led by Julie Palmer, uh, the multi-ethnic cohort is involved, and we are pooling our data and samples so that we'll have more than 5,000 African-American women with breast cancer, equal number of controls. We're getting the tumor blocks so that we can look at all of these different breast cancer subtypes and really hone in on the risk factors. Um, because if you have really large sample size in a consortium, your results are more believable. Because in epidemiology studies, unlike mice where you can put them in a box, same strain, and treat them all the same, people aren't like that. And so studies the results can be variable. But with a sample size like this from many studies, we hope that our results will, will provide a lot of information. So could you summarize the findings that you have made about the differences between breast cancer, what causes it, and, and the do's and don'ts indeed, both for avoiding the disease and for treating it? So overall, we know some of the risk factors for breast cancer. For African American women, we know less. Um, but now that we're learning about breast cancer subtypes, again, this is a very young field. Most of the research to date has come from the Carolina Breast Can Cancer Study and the Black Women's Health Study. But we do know that um, no matter what kind of breast cancer um, you get, breastfeeding is going to reduce risk of this more aggressive breast cancer. So we would never say don't have children because it may increase risk of aggressive breast cancer. But if you do have children, breastfeed them. And are there any messages for cancer doctors coming out of all of this? Well, n not necessarily for treatment and survival. Um, but for those who are at risk, you know, especially women who have a strong family history of breast cancer or more aggressive breast cancer or breast cancer at a younger age, it's probably quite important to counsel them that if they're going to have children to breastfeed. You've made some findings about vitamin D, haven't you? Yes, and in our group we've been interested in whether or not vitamin D is associated with reduced risk of breast cancer. And again, the epidemiology studies are inconsistent. But when we took a large pool of um, women with breast cancer and we had blood samples, we measured vitamin D in their blood samples, we found that um, higher levels of vitamin D were associated with ER positive or this luminal A breast cancer, the, the better prognosis. The lowest levels were in women with triple negative breast cancer. And Importantly, we also have shown, and many others have shown the same thing, African Americans, there's a very high prevalence of um, being severely deficient in vitamin D because pigmentation in skin blocks um, ultraviolet rays um, and vitamin D synthesis. So now we're working in this large consortium that we have to be able to see if low levels of vitamin D are associated with more aggressive breast cancer in African American women. And historically, it's been known for a long time that there are wide differences in the incidence of breast cancer and that these cannot be explained genetically uh, because of lifestyle factors. Do you think that by taking the right measures and understanding the different kinds of breast cancer, it could be possible to avoid a high incidence of breast cancer if you do the right things? Well, this is our goal in um, cancer prevention and cancer epidemiology to, to try to discover what can reduce risk of breast cancer. Um, some we don't want to hear about, alcohol consumption increases risk of breast cancer, even uh, moderate amounts. Um, physical activity decreases risk of breast cancer. That can help protect um, and reduce risk. Breastfeeding. Um, and, you know, the data aren't out yet, but um, it looks as though vitamin D 
uh, may reduce risk of more aggressive breast cancer. Christine, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.